Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the Sunday, the 7th of May, 2023. Welcome to our one Taiji letter a week from the European Taiji Culture Center. The European Taiji Culture Center is a global network platform and provides the gateway for many of deeper application of traditional Chinese culture, philosophy, medicine, and sinology. Today, we have continued our learn our young style, 37 form of Tai Chi Quan from our master Zhao Youbin and his son Zhao Liang. Mr. Zhao Youbin is the one of the top Tai Chi Quan family published of by the World Tai Chi Chuan Network. Mr. Zhao Youbin, he spent his Kung Fu through China and more of more than 20 countries. My name is Chang Yu from Germany. Today we have the 10th of the um, Tai Chi class. Uh, we learned the form of 27 to 29. Okay, so if you don't have any question, so I will show you the learning video now. Hello, I'm Zhao Youbin. This is the 10th class for today. We will continue the body technique. We have a phrase, Li Shen Zhong Zheng, Zhi Cheng Ba Feng, keeping the body centrally aligned, calm and relaxed, supporting the body in all directions. No matter in static or dynamic state, the waist controls and coordinates the weight center of the body so as to make the legs powerful, stable and agile. Now let's talk about some requirements for the waist in side bow stance, backward step, and side step. Let's take left and right warding off in the form raising hands as example. We start with the left warding off. This is a side bow stance. Now we need to take care of both the left and right sides. The left hand manipulates the force and the right hand should be the foil to the left hand. So the hands and the body form a circular closing state. What is the circular closing state of the body technique? Look, it is not wrong if you push the palm this way, but the shoulders and the back are on the same plane. The muscles of the shoulders and the back should be relaxed, helping the arms to extend forward. This kind of force is for integrating the hand and body to make circular movement. The common problem with single whip is folding the shoulders backward. We should open the shoulder blades slightly forward so that the force between the both arms is connected. It is the same with the legs. The most important is that the center of the weight should not be off. If so, the power would be not enough for supporting. The feet should rely on each other and the crotch integrates the force to be powerful and stable. The common problem with stepping forward is raising the body and the leg too much. And when stepping forward, lowering the posture too much with the bent waist. During the process of changing the movement, conversion of emptiness and solidness, we should apply the principle of Feng Jin Bi Chen, sink each time when stepping forward. How to do it? 
This is fixed step left warding off. Next for the right warding off. The weight should move completely onto the left leg. So, according to the principle of sync each time when stepping forward, the left hip should keep stable and sink down, not letting it up, as if sitting on the chair. Now, it is time for the hip to move. It sinks and rises together with the heel. Then the weight stably moves here, and therefore the body is now leftward. All the movement is either round or circular. The relaxing and sitting of the leg makes the weight move evenly onto the left leg. The body should not move stiffly like this way. The most important is to keep the chest relaxed and the body turns together with the sitting and rotating of the hip. Do not only move the shoulders. The lateral movement of the upper body should follow that of the weight. Do not disconnect the relations between the upper body and the waist. The upper body and the lower body should as a whole, move in harmony and turn to the left at the same time. You should feel the change between emptiness and solidness. As for the body technique, usually one of the both sides is solid, the other one is empty. For example, when we push this palm out, the whole force should be transmitted to the hand. During the moving process, we should be able to feel the change of the body. When the left side is solid, the right side should be empty. Now, right warding off. The force from the left side should supplement the right side, because the right side seems to be solid, but in fact, it is empty. We should gradually understand this change between emptiness and solidness, which is a feeling in your sense, in your mind. Briefly, during the process of advancing and retreating, the upper body and both sides of the body should, together with the movement of the waist, vary between emptiness and solidness. This is so-called yin and yang in tai chi. So, in the form grasp the bird's tail, when we step forward, the left side is solid, then the right side should be empty. When the right side is solid, the left side surely should be empty. Now, let's watch the complete process. When starting, the weight moves forward and then leftward. The left side of the body turns solid. At the same time, the right leg gradually turns completely empty. The hip turns relaxed, and the left lower waist is solid, pulling the right leg and adjusting the balance of the weight, and coordinating the upper body and the lower body. Watch again. During the process of change between emptiness and solidness in side bow stance or forward step, firstly, sink the hip, then the body turns to the left, forming a circular form. Now, turn again and the right leg becomes completely relaxed. Now, lift the leg and the left lower waist moves back and downward to form a change between emptiness and solidness. For the empty right leg, the left lower waist should be solid to carry the leg out so as to coordinate the balance of the body in motion. If you raise, extend and lean back, that would be wrong. The force could be floating and the moving point would be in wrong position. 
This is the side stance in the form cloud hands. When the weight moves from the right to the left, there is a rotating movement, which is the same requirement for both the waist and the legs, and for the trunk as well, because the central balance is at the bottom of the waist. What else should we pay attention to? The same as the last start stepping. The left is solid and the right is empty. When we are here, the emptiness is taped to the left side, but the body should not lean backward because the upper body would be rigid and top heavy and uh, then would lose the balance. The key point is that the left leg sinks down and the left loin pulls back and meanwhile the figure stretches forward. The left hip sinks and the left lower waist pulls the right leg and the emptiness and solidness is very clear. Now you may feel a sitting force and you should also feel that the waist and its muscles are drawn in, curved, instead of being straight. The body, the legs, and the limbs always work in coordination. As for Zhu Zai Yu Yao, being controlled by the waist, Ming Yi Yuan Tou Zai Yao Xi, source of command is in the waist region. In one word, all movements in Tai Chi Quan have close relations with the waist. Advancing, retreating, and changes of all movements is closely relationed with the waist. We have referred to the body rotating in this side step. When we move the hip, the leg, and the figure, the left lower waist should sit down and back, and the body should be skewed, not upright. Meanwhile, the shoulders and uh, hips turn to the left. You should not only rotate the head, neither twist the waist, which makes the force floating. It is the waist that controls the upper and the lower body. The floating force is not good. Move horizontally, sink the hip, the waist, turn the body one by one, and all parts of the body coordinate with each other, forming an integrated body. If the body is on one side, or the force goes upward, it would make the force dispersed. Especially for beginners, we should try to avoid moving only the legs or shoulders. Now, Look at the bow stance and empty stance in the form brush knee in twist step. When the force is here, it is full and in right place. Next, it should be the waist that controls the limbs. Firstly, while the weight moves forward, the hip should sink and the figure follows forward. Look at my posture. The upper body is pulled backward, and the force is also floating up. We should always try to get information from the waist and the legs. Here, the information means relations between changes of the waist and legs with the body in motion. Together with the moving forward of the weight, we lean the body forward and bend the right leg. And now the body keeps in dynamic balance. If the center of the weight is higher, the lower body would be unstable. With the moving forward of the weight, the back leg is lifted and the hips should be relaxed and then sit down. The emptiness and solidness has to be very clear. Next, we move the weight backward 
and at the same time turn the body rightward. Attention. This is not right. It has not lowered below the waist. It wouldn't be right, neither, if you sit back after having lowered. The right movement is as follows, with the weight moving back. The right heel is pulled in. The right heel turns to the right. And of course, the both sides of the lower waist work closely with these movements. The waist is the controller, but one part moves, all parts move. All internal and external parts are connected and coordinated. Now the weight has moved completely onto the back leg. What to do? Lifting it this way or squeezing the leg? We should pay attention to the coordination of the hands, feet, and the waist. Now we are here. While the weight moves back, the waist sits down. We do not simply pull it off, because the only pulling back will cause it to go down. We should at the same time pull the weight back and down, while sinking back, sink down. Look, lowering, moving back, and now turning to the right. Look at the front foot. When we are ready to lift it, the right lower waist should start to sink. There are two moving points, so the movement is solid and stable. It is not good that you lift the left foot and then drop it down. Firstly, you should relax the hip and open the crotch. 90% of the weight is at the back. As the figure is controlled by the waist, what should we pay attention to? Look, the tailbone sinks and the lower waist are pulled downward and backward in opposite direction of the hands. That is, the chest goes forward and the waist muscles sink down, straightening up and down. This is so-called Li Yu Ji Fa. The force is released from the back, and Shang Xia Guan Chuan, the force goes through up and down. We should try to understand it in practice. Watch again. The weight moves back. The body inclines instead of going back. While lowering the right leg, do not move the weight with anticipation. Firstly, lower the leg and then turn the heel inward. Now the upper body moves backward. The hip and the lower waist rotate. Lift the leg and get the waist down. Now we feel that the hips are drawn in. Without such curving, there would be no agility, ricky of changes between emptiness and solidness. I will do it again. The waist and the hips move backward. The waist turns and sits. Now the right side is solid and the left side is empty. Now control it. Lower the left foot down and then relax the waist and pull it downward. At the same time, let the chest push forward. The head and the figure follow the chest moving forward. This is the straightening up and down during the process in making an empty stance, which is one of the moving modes for being controlled by the waist. It is the same with the movement of the waist in the form single way push down into low posture. We could not move this way. We should relax both the hips and the waist because they are associated. Here we emphasize the movement of the waist sensation of movement of being controlled by the waist. As the tip of toe turns outward, the lower waist should be relaxed and the waist should move back. Then we rotate the waist and the hips. I emphasized 
that the crowd force should go through a reversed capital letter U, Chinese number eight, which has relations with the waist and hips. When the weight moves back, we rotate the waist and the hips. During the process, there should be no dead point, and the whole body should be extended out. When we lower the body, the tailbone should be pulled down. The figure should not be upright. The body should be bent forward. The center of the weight should be between the two feet. Though you may squat with the body leaning back, the center of the weight is backward. It is not okay. For pulling back and grabbing, the hand leads the body forward and down. The body leans over but does not get down. It is the tailbone that sinks down and then naturally makes the weight go downward. If the body is too straight, the weight is backward. If the body leans too much, it would be collapsed. Both are undesirable. No matter in static or dynamic movement, we should always keep the central balance and central alignment of the body. Now another example. In the form wide green spreads this means the upper hand and the lower hand should coordinate with each other. How do they coordinate? It is the back, the waist, and five bowels that coordinate them. The upper and lower bodies form the main bow. Two arms and two legs form another four bowels. The joint point is the waist. In the back, the opening and the closing movement of all parts of the body relies on the waist. It seems that there is nothing changed when we practice Yang Tai Chi Chuan, as we always keep the body centrally aligned. But changes of solidness and emptiness, left or right, always exist. These changes adjust and coordinate all the movements so as to avoid convex, concave, and interruption. The characteristics of Yang Tai Chi Chuan is centrally aligned, handsome and energetic, relaxed and lively, flexible changes between solidness and emptiness. Moderate opening and closing. All these movements rely on the waist. The form preparation is the typical example for the central alignment of the body in static state. I stand here. The center of the weight is an inner straight line from Bai Hui acupoint of the head to the perineum, and.、Uh, Yung Chuan point of the feet. The body leans forward a little bit. The tailbone sinks a little bit. The hips are drawn in. We should try to keep the upper body upright and the lower body downward. In fact, sinking the tailbone signifies lowering the body. According to the body technique, we should firstly turn to the left and then to the right. Causing left emptiness, a little left emptiness, and a little right solidness. Now, turn back, a little right solidness, and a little left emptiness. By such repeated changes between emptiness and solidness, we may find out changes between emptiness and solidness of both sides of the body. Between advancing and retreating, there is also emptiness and solidness between the waist and the legs, and in all other movements of the body as well. For example, when we lift the leg inside bow stance, the left and lower waist rises together with the right leg, so the left and lower waist is solid, leading the leg. Now the right leg is empty. All this is controlled by the waist. The movement of being controlled by the waist is very difficult, especially for beginners who need years to be familiar with it. But when you get its concept in your practice, you will gradually feel it, digest it, 
understand it, and perceive it. The reason why the more you practice, the more you like it, is that you may skillfully combine the movements with techniques of the body, of the step, and of hands. Of course, on the premise of understanding ten top points from Yang Chengfu. That's all for today. You may ask questions if any. In this class, I will go on to answer more questions, and the main topic will be Yan Fa expressions of the eyes. See you soon. Yo 右手握拳第一动重心不变左脚脚外摆同时左手胸前捧起右手变杂二两手抱球接着上步右手背要与腰对圆撑然后捋腰脚手相随外面两掌放平
下式，一动，右脚尖外摆，左手五指向前，掌心朝右，松，肩胯。第二，左手屈拢，重心后移，其渐渐下沉，注意身体要正，左手下。前穿出重心前移，左脚尖外摆，右脚尖内扣，左手前穿，右手变挡，收至右胯旁。第二动，重心全部移向左腿，注意右手与右脚相随的拧起，左手下按，掌心朝下，注意收腰胯，身体中正，左独立式，右独立式。右手右脚同时下落，右脚稍向后，先脚掌后脚跟，重心后移，然后坐稳，起，左手左脚，身体立起，手要换，眼随左手前视。Hello, everyone. It's time for our turns class. The first action in this lesson is stepping up, point towards growing. Take the step up and point towards growing. Step up, deflect, parry, and punch that will be learned later. Fist on the elbow, turn body and streak. Punch, punch. We learned before. That's above together called Tai Chi Wu Cui. Now, I will do this action first. After sweeping the notes, step up, lunge, left hand brush, keep stepping up, left hand brush backward, then lunge forward with brushing, left hand punch. This is overall of this action. Chui means fist. It is a single fist movement according to the different levels of hitting and blocking methods used in conjunction with the hands. It can be divided into five types of chui. As the name replies, the palm towards growing. Is to hit the opponent's crouch and abdomen. There, the fist turns towards the middle part. The next step is deflect, parry, and pound, which hits above chest. So this fist will be higher later. The fist under the elbow, pound downward, have different hitting purposes. But both hands have a defensive and blocking action. Prepare for punching and hitting. Nurse, take a look at this action from the side. And this is also continuous steps. Two steps action is different from parting the wild horse's mane. For example, while changing from the right to the left, we must swing the foot outward. And up the knee and hold the ball. Take an upward step, then the lunge down it. Keep on doing. At the end of the last action, 
is the beginning of the next action. Nigra crouch pound motion. It has two continuous steps. The characteristics of this action is that the foot should fall diagonally when stepping up, and the degree of the hind foot should be measured directly. Firstly, tilt the foot, shift the gravity forward, turn the body to the right, keep turning the waist. Lift the knee up and step down. Go ahead with lunge. The way to step up is to lean your foot and not swing it. It's different from the previous consecutive steps. The first move is to tilt the foot and follow the lunge with the left hand forward in knock. Flip the right palm. Onto the right knee, turn around and up the knee. Bend left elbow back with brushing. Turn the right palm up and clench the fist in front of the right crotch. Bend the left elbow and sink the palm. Then follow the lunge and brush your left hand forward over your left knee. The lunge and streak with the right fist forward. Now see here. Rotate the right hand forward when going out, with the fists facing forward, and the fists eyes upward. Fold the crotch and pull out the back, leaning forward slightly. This is demonstration on the right side. Nurse, take a look again. Lift the knee, step up and drop the foot. Lunge with the wrist turned, and the left hand brushes forward. Sink the shoulder and elbow. The palm rose sunk. Be seated. The right hand goes a hurt while lunge. Turn the palm and whip flatly. Then up the knee and bend the elbow. Step up and clench the fist, lunging, brushing, and bunching. Just be sure to lower your fist to the same level to your lower abdomen. Now for this actor, we have front brushing when turning wrist. Be careful not to turn our shoulders over and not tilt the little finger while brushing. Sit the palm root and brush forward, elbow forward while brushing back. Also think the palm root while taking them back. When taking the left hand forward to brush, it's also necessary to think the palm root, like. Long Xi Ao Bu. The shoulders, elbows, and the wrists should be sunk with an arc shape, and must brush over the front knee. Finally, place your palm next to your left knee. The fingertips navel to your knee. We need to pay attention to the issue of brushing hand. Pay attention to this action. When punch forward, which is the same as the initial action we learned before, actually is also a knee brushing gesture, but it requires bending down and punching downward. These two movements are very similar, but when doing the pump downward, actually the fist is bent and placed behind the right crotch. With the fist facing nerved, when heading forward and downward, the fist does not rotate. When punching towards crotch, the fist should be in front of the right crotch. With the fist facing upward, when punch, no, that the arm should rotate 19 degrees forward. And finally, the fist facing nerved. It has rotating attractor action. This is characteristic of punt towards crotch. The deflector, parry, and punt we learn later also rotates and heaves in this way. This is step up and punt towards crotch. Now next, we'll move on to the next action. Step up and grab the peacock's tail. 
Do you still remember another action we learned before, called "grab the peacock's tail"? After the opening form, swing your foot, turn your body to the right to form ball hug. Open it, widen up left and right. Be here, rolling back, squeezing and pressing. Most of their two motions are the same, but due to different connections. After completing the palm towards crotch, there is no left wadding up when turns to the right. I'll demonstrate it first. Swing, wadding up, up the knee and hold the ball. Step up and down, and it will be right here. Then follow the lunge and turn your wrist. You get the right wadding up. Then follow the order of grabbing the peacock tail to roll him back, squeeze and press, and that's it. So we just need to learn how these two actors connect. Now watching at the front. Back view to this motion before taking the step. Swing your left foot outward by no less than 45 degrees. Lift the right wrist upwards. Rotate the thumb outward and turn the right hand into the palm. Sink the palm, root a little, then turn around and lift the knee. Both palms face each other, holding the ball. And then lift the right hand up. Both hands seem to spin the ball. Your right hand upward, the right foot downward. Lunge and twist your wrist. Then spread your hands to roll back, squeeze and press. These are all repeating actions. Now, not two words again here. Right view again. Swing your foot. Left hand upward. And gently press the right hand's root down slightly. One, two. Turn around and lift your knee. Palms face each other. Three. Step up and foot down. Four. Lunge and turn your wrist flatter. That's it. That is the explanation of step up and grab the peacock tail. After grabbing the peacock tail. The next section is called the single whip descending stance. From its name, it's composed of two actions. The first action is called a single whip, and the second action is called a downward move. We have also learned the single whip before, and the practice of these two movements in the single whip. Be the same, or start with pressing after flattening the. Palms, buckle the foot and turning the wrist. Move the hands flatly and bending the elbows back to the wrist. Lift your knee, right hand outward. Step up with hooking. Lunge with the left arm rotation and palm push. Put open. This action is the same before and later. Generally speaking. The third seven style is composed of different motions, but before the descending stance is usually connected at the single whip. There we use the single whip descending stance to represent, beside its own technical usage, the single whip can be found in many traditional eight five style. It also has a function of connecting back and forth in the routine, as well changing the direction. It is like the bundle in the routine, divided it into different paragraphs to connect different actions, and we can gradually get the various connections and functions more in future learning. After the first action. Turn around for the single way part. We can just follow the previous method. The next move is called a descending stance, which is a downward lunge. 
a crouching stirrup where the body squats down and then thrust forward to form a lunge. This is the descending stance. Each technique mainly needs to solve the problem of streaks to pull the opponent down in the opposite direction. It's usually necessary to take the next move, standing on one nerve, kicking the opponent with your foot, which is one of its connecting functions. Specifically. We need to take the following steps to do it. Let's take a look at the foot first, because the gravity needs to be moved back. When moving, swing the right foot outward and open it. The pinch between the two feet is at about 135 degrees. First move, your body backward. Turn your wrist to the right. Swing your right foot. And lower your ass according to your ability, depending on your own situation. If your neck skills are good, you can lower it a bit more. If not, don't too lower. Just follow the milling. However, when thinking, be careful not to buck your toes. Second, think. And third. Shift your weight towards the front nerve. Start taking the forward lunge, then pull your right foot back while lunging. This forms a lunge. Return to the posture of the single whip lunge. Just now. One, open. Two, think. Three, lunge, and then back your foot back. Or are the three stirrups? The purpose of swinging the foot is mainly to open the two hips, make it easier for the body to think slightly. Now about hands. Firstly, when shift your weight back, you need to turn your head back and look at your right hand, cutting downwards with your left wrist. And the five fingers facing forward. Retract your left elbow to your left chest. Then squat down slightly, and gently think the palm to your own crouch, like knife cutting. Let me demonstrate it from the front again. One. Swing the foot, pull your hand apart, stretch your right hand back a bit, and bend your elbow back to your left chest. One, looking at the right hand. Two, squat down and cut deeply. Three, pass nerve hand through the right elbow, and four, buckle the right foot. Look, it hurt. This is descending stance. After single whip. The knees to be an independent nerve. What is an independent nerve? Standing here with one nerve and lifting the other nerve. This is called an independent nerve. Put your hands here. It's called golden rooster dependence. Standing here like a chicken with one foot. How does golden rooster dependence connect with single wave? Do you still remember that? When we just made a forward move, we launch it forward and buckle right foot with the left toe facing forward. Next move, swing your left foot outward at least 45 degrees. At the same time, change the hand into palm and turn to nerve as you swing your foot with your hand. Reach south. At this point, our crouch opens. Move the gravity forward. Right nerve relaxed. Lift the knee and nerve. Keep turning our waist. Push the left nerve against the ground. Up the knee over the hips to the belly button level. Stand here. One. Swing your foot. Two. Turn your waist and lift your knee. Three. 
push your nap nerk street and nip your right nerk up. Now from the side view, swing left hand, turning wrist and lifting knee, dropping elbow. Notice here, lifting the five fingers up, pressing the left hand down, mid elbow and knee, the little finger facing forward, and the palm facing nerved. Don't straighten your left nerve or stand here bent. Without energy, this force hasn't come out. Relax the knee joint slightly while pushing straight. Roll the hips and the wrist. Lift the knee and stand sturdily in this place. That's all. Watching again, pull it open. The thread palm. Swing through. Lift your knee. Stand up. Roll your wrist and crouch. Hold it down with your left hand and lift it up with the right hand to stabilize it. That's it. This is the first gold rooster pendant. Another supporting on right nerve. The right nerve has already been lifted up. And then you need to squat down. First, squat down and take a half step back with the toes of your right foot facing diagonally. Sitting back and turning around, lifting your knee and nerves, and then standing up. That is the way to shift the gravity. Let's take a look in another direction. One. Two, shift the gravity. Sit still. Three, lift knee to stand up. Three motions. Hands moving are as follows. One, flip the right palm down and follow the right leg down to press it down. Two, sit back and turn the wrist. Three, press the right palm down and lift the left hand up. Now take a look in this direction again. One, two, three. Front. One, two, three. Just now was the explanation of the independence of left and right golden rooster. Next, I will connect these four actions we talked about today and demonstrate them to everyone. First, side viewing. One, two, three, and and four. Pump towards growing. Step up and grab the peacock tail. Swing foot. Wider. Hold the ball with knee upper. Step forward to form a right wider nerve. Wider nerve. Rolling back. Squeeze. Pressing. Single way. Descending stance. Golden rule stretched pendant. Looking again in a different direction. Point towards growing. Step up and grab the peacock's tail.
single wave. Descending stains. Golden rooster independent. All the above is complete demonstration of those four actions. That's all the topic for today. Thanks for watching. C, 请问赵老师下视的时候腰转到什么角度合适？这个下视的时候。呃，腰转到什么角度合适？呃，这倒还真是个问题。呃，首先一个，这个转腰啊，是转的胯，呃，这个首先要搞清楚。啊，就是单边下视，呃，它转的呃是胯的一部分，这个胯这部分呢，它走的是个八字形，就是它走一个圈在整个这个过程中呢，它走了个圈儿，圆润的，呃，它不是断进的，是往回坐，一边往后坐，一边向左向右转，随时接着再向前走，这中间是不能断，这个连是连在一起的进，什么角度呢？角度是不能过，但是不能不到，嗯。嗯这个我还很难给一个什么角度来角度来给你讲这个问题，就是跨间啊不要圆润，不能过，嗯，不能不能转过了转死了那不行啊，不能有死角，嗯，呃，它是哎不能有死角就可以了啊，嗯，啊，这个八字形啊必须当进是走圆润的一种呃一种运动呃进感。啊，不能有断进的、嗯，这个是千万，嗯、这是要点。这个啊嗯，嗯，呃，就严格来说的话，就是转的角度没有大小，就是以圆以手收回来能下去，这个进势是圆润的就可以了。嗯啊啊，但是不能直，这不能直着下去，这是不行的。对，或者说转的很厚，再往后夸张的那样做，那也是不对的。那这个这个正身要保持着直着，那个就是腰椎要往下坐，对吧？就是你说的话很对，嗯，是尾捋腰肌往下坠，这个是非常准确的，嗯啊，是是，不单单是靠胯关节和膝关节的呃下沉，啊，首先是尾捋腰肌的下沉，胯膝随之而下沉，嗯，身体不能正。嗯必须要扶，必须要往前扶，啊，它不能像一堵一个墙一样的垂直的往下落，那个是不对的。它随着重心往下落，身体身形要略向前扶，身体的重心才能平衡。嗯，呃，随着你重心往下移啊，身形啊要往前扶，你你身体的重心的平，质量的整体的平衡性才能平衡，才能稳定。你如果是。单单的蹲下去，身体保持十法中正，呃，竖在那里，那是僵劲。嗯嗯，重心是偏后的，是是不可取的啊。嗯，对，对，是，对，要感觉一下、嗯。我们还有个外国人，呃，路易斯，他也是特别爱好太极，也跟我们一起练、嗯、练功啊。他、嗯、会一点、啊，懂一点中文。他在。中国这个很自由了，欢迎你爱好咱们这个圈的到西安来做客。It's a pity、这个、I never I never met I never visit x i a n I had intention of visiting. Yeah, yeah. 他说还没去过西安，他以前是在天津，呃，学的那个太极拳。嗯，不到不到西安来，等于没到中国来。So if you not、uh, travel to Xi'an, you said you will not be in China. This、yes. <laughs> is old, old、yes. uh, capital city, very old capital city of、uh, China, Xi'an. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, I felt yeah. it uh, a very um, it was a very important imperial um city and uh, but the time I was in in there it was still in large uh, working re reconstruction in 2016 17. Ah. Uh, so I wow. I didn't went there because uh, I was told that it was very uh, everybody uh, the buildings were a lot of work in the traditional places but yeah. uh, I, I intend to visit them. <笑>他说有机会去因为他是做室内设计工作的 the consulate a Chinese consulate in Lisbon um, he uh, told he want to also go to China. <laughs> uh, 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 there's many students <laughs> from um, Portugal uh, to travel to Xi'an. To uh, uh, we are to Xi'an. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> we are coming to Xi'an. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. A little bit of what Master said about the... I understood he was explaining some techniques about the... The, um, uh, golden the body booster. upright yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and the weight balance should mm. be the balance as well just uh, like the eight oh, the, yeah. the number eight not mm -hmm. the the corn uh, so hard from the form is uh, so like this it's no problem if you travel to Xi'an. There's many students from Master Zhao can speak very well uh, in English. They can do the uh, volunteer for you and be translator. <laughs> right. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Okay. Anybody? Xi'an, 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 <laughs> There's uh, so many foreigners students want to go to Xi'an for travel. It's uh, one season is Tai Chi Chuan, the second is the um, uh, history, and um, also the delicious uh, yeah, the the food. foods it's from very Xi'an. Known. Yeah, it is it's very known ah. outside of, of China, the Xi'an food. It's very well recognized. People, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very famous. Ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why to Xi'an. Yeah, okay. Welcome ah. your and your friends to Xi'an. Okay, um, may you some money? Okay. Okay. Uh, Everybody, see. no question. We will uh, see you next month. See you. See you. See you. Okay, welcome. See you. Welcome. Bye bye. 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 Bye b